Kaswira say Mreza Mbabge, welcome to our channel Zim Confessions and Deep Secrets. Kana kaki kutanka kukuya panino channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Kana chungwa garo ka subscriber, don't forget to comment and share this video. Mas Mreza Mbabge, takui jirai, nyaya buritswa ni ma vendors for ED ava send a message kuna president Emerson Munangagwa. Wachita wala iwo, wachiti, president Emerson Munangagwa. So I do it as a good thing. I'm a vendor in street because of the Sadek summit. You do it as a safe and a good disadvantage. My vendors that are evil, but cheating, they're not going to leave the streets. Whereas Zimbabwe, they want my Sadek leaders to go on a chokwadi. Let's pray the name of Munangagwa. Kavasa Wandi say, Kurema Nikuda, Kukuta Masadek leaders, how we have seen his people are more important than Masadek. President Mwere Zimbabwe So, pani ya leta Ya nyoro ni thino venda Ya kadres kutu president Masu mnangagwa ya trenda Ma streets ya social media This letter Ya nyoro wa na ni venda Uyo, I identify Is my machuma Shitawala iye Achiti Dear Mr. President Mnangagwa We know Sadak leaders are coming into the country This operation of chasing Vendors out of CBD is cruel, satanic, and inconsiderate. Vending is our only source of income. We have children to feed. There are no jobs in the. There are no jobs in Zimbabwe. It's only a lunatic, apostle like. It's only lunatic, like apostle Andrew Taunashi, who thinks there are jobs in Zimbabwe, who advise you wrongly, Mr. President. During election campaign. You teamed, you teamed us vendors for ED. What went wrong now, Pendramberi? Uh, Shall I actually say the countries have better economies than ours? It's better that the Sadak presidents see the truth. This will help if we seek refugee in their country. They will treat us knowing there is nothing in this Zimbabwe. Mr. President, Musavi Gaurema, Amubati Renazo Izri. Please. Regai waone kutimunika, muno da rubatiro, muno da muno da kuviga, kukoni wa kwenye yere, kana msinga gone, amu gone, amu gone, amu gone yenyuzi. How long are you going to hide the truth, Mr. President? It seems you like Sadak leaders more than your people. Why do you behave like a foreigner? Yours in tears, my machuma, my machuma, venda et kopa kapana. Those are the ones. Ah, this letter. Ayo machuma chema chema. Ustara iwo, wakiti president mnangagwa, gawasa wa zinge mstreet in order to look like baruku gwa na basa pambiru. Masadak leaders, shinzi, his people are more important than masadak leaders. Baruku da kutiva wani zifu, shi mzaka ronge ka mnika. Tisinga zotu miyona si, nyayi, mareza mbabu. So, one of my political analysts, Tendai Ruben Mbofana, abuda, panea nda radio, shitawara iye, achiti, Uh, we can't suffer in silence just to make Munangagwa look good in eyes of Sadak. In our African culture, indeed, displaying an image of family togethers, togetherness and happiness in the presence of visitors is a core value. In fact, it is common practice in our culture to make the home as comfortable and welcoming as possible for guests. As such, it makes perfect sense for the family to put its best foot forward even if it means placing any differences and disagreements on world and acting all jolly jolly for the sake of creating a welcoming atmosphere. However, this only works when these differences and disagreements are what anyone would expect from any family and are not too serious. For instance, let us say a husband and a wife were arguing over the latest uh, recent shopping spree whereby she spent whereby she overspent above the agreed budget. This can easily be placed on the back banner during the presence of visitors. As a matter of fact, when handled wisely, this period of unity and harmony may actually automatically fix the, the disagreement such that by the time the guests leave, the husband and wife would have totally forgotten about their little disagreements. Nonetheless, what happens when the differences and disagreements are so severe that they cannot simply be swiped under the carpet for the mere sake of making the guests 
feel at home. What, what if keeping quiet may actually be literally a matter of life and death? Let us say that the husband has been ruthlessly abusing his wife whilst at the same time not adequately fending for his children due to his irresponsible, reckless and heartless behavior. As it turns out, only a few days before the visitors, the wife nearly lose her life at the hands of her brutal husband, who now gives his undivided attention and affection towards his side chick. I'm, uh, in so doing, all the family finances are going towards his own pleasures such that his children are now out of school due to unpaid fees. Each night, the family goes to bed hungry since he no longer buys sufficient food. If any of his family dare complain of his unbearable hunger and suffering, they are met with brute savagery at the hands of their father. When the wife and children try to report the matter to the authorities or even seek medical attention, the father locks them up in the home, accusing them of disloyalty and disrespect. How is this scenario to be handled in the presence of visitors? More so when these guests are actually close relatives. Should the family religiously and faithfully follow our culture principles of pretending that all was well in the home? Or would, be, would it be advisable for them to put up the facade of a happy family, living in unity and harmony, merely to keep their father's image and reputation in the eyes of the relative, relatives intact? Or should they take this opportunity of the presence of the relatives to finally tell their horrific experiences? at the hands of their cold-hearted father and husband. Should they not use this as the chance to be, to be heard and hopefully get some help? Would be, strong, would be doing so truly be regarded as an act of disloyalty or disrespect to their father and husband? If there is anyone who answered yes to this last question, then that person is a potential or current abuser. In most circumstances, those who fiercely adhere to the meaning that one should not expose to outsiders what is happening within the home are abusers. In these modern times, those who are facing abuse of any type, whether at home, workplace, community, or even the country, are encouraged to speak out. No one should suffer or even die in silence. With this logic in mind, this then brings us to the upcoming 44th Sada Care of State and Government Summit to be hosted by Zimbabwe on 17 August 2024. The country will be receiving very important visitors from the Southern African region. Ordina ordinarily, as according to the African culture, all of us in Zimbabwe should present a united front of a people living in peace and harmony. We should make our visitors feel immensely welcome and at home. This, mean, this means putting all our differences and disagreements on pause while our guests are in the country. Under normal circumstances, we should actually be celebrating with our father, President Emerson Mnangagwa, as Zimbabwe takes over Sarah Chair. Please note that this, not please note that it is Zimbabwe and not Mnangagwa, assuming this largely ceremonial role, which is determined on a rotational basis, going to every SADC member state and not won to elections. Nevertheless, our dilemma as Zimbabweans is not at all ordinary. Just as the abused and brutalized families mentioned earlier, we cannot simply pretend that all is well in the country, while it's acting all jolly jolly. We are suffering in the most harrowing ways at the, at the repressive, barbaric hands of, Muna, of the Munangagwa regime. This is a government that has cast the vast majority of people of Zimbabwe into untold poverty, with millions unable to afford a decent meal. Besides 49% of the population living in extreme poverty, 7 million Zimbabweans are facing starvation. Already, based on statistics from UNICEF, an estimated 1.7 million children in Zimbabwe will need urgent humanitarian assistance this year. Zimbabwean children, 23.5% over half a million are stunted and do not grow and develop to their full potential. Last year alone, 4,300 children who were admitted in hospitals for wasting, which the world describes as acute malnutrition and a sign that a child 
has experienced short periods of undernutrition. Our hospitals are without the most basic medication, with over 2,500 people dying of cancer each year due to unavailability of cancer machines. Yet, this is a country endowed with 60 precious minerals that are in demand worldwide and which we are freely trading. We, are, we have enough wealth in Zimbabwe to give everyone a relatively decent livelihood. The only problem is that the wealth is not being shared equally among citizens, but it is only enjoyed by a few. Otherwise, where would the ZEC, where would the ZEC find 1.2 million to pay for a server valued at 4,000? In fact, if there was no wealth in Zimbabwe, where would ZEC have found the 100 million for a dubious deal with close Munangagwa's ally, Rick Nochivayo, and his partners for electro material whose cost was inflated by more than 235%. If Zimbabwe had no money, could ZEC even pay 7.6 million for flashless toilets? The toilets of which was inflated to 3,800 per unit instead of the proper 300 that were only delivered months after the August 2023 elections. Where did the government find the 7 million distributed to Mike and Moses Mpofu for goods that were never delivered? According to Attorney General Lois Matanda Moyo, Zimbabwe is losing more than 1.8 billion a year due to corruption alone. This is suspected to be a very conservative figure as the amount is believed is believed to exceed 2 billion. However, whatever the exact figure, Zimbabwe cannot afford to lose so much money to selfish individuals whose greed has left millions of ordinary citizens in abject poverty. Is it any wonder that Zimbabwe is ranked 145, 149 out of 108 countries on Transparency International Corruption Perceptions Index for 2023, making it classified as highly corrupt? Imagine what 1.8 billion a year can do for the livelihood and well-being of ordinary Zimbabweans. A cancer radiotherapy machine costs only 1.5 million. How many of these life-saving machines could we have bought with the 7.6 million used by ZEC for flashless toilets in a country where 2,500 people die from cancer everywhere every year? As the nation faces an El Nino-induced drought and an estimated 7 million Zimbabweans are in urgent need of food aid, the government is pleading with the international community for 2 billion. Isn't this the same amount the country is losing to corruption in a single year? If the Munangagwa administration had truly cracked down on corruption, particularly at the highest levels of power, no one in Zimbabwe would go hungry. In fact, with 60 minerals, in fact, with 60 minerals sought after worldwide, the country should be more economically advanced than the United Arab Emirates, which only has oil and gas as natural resources. Yet, we have some of the poorest people on the planet. In fact, according to statistics by Farai Mangu of the Center of National Resource Governance, Zimbabwe has potential to earn more than 15 billion a year from our resources. The main reason this is not being achieved is corruption through the smuggling of our minerals and other illicit financial transactions involving high-ranking officials. Who can forget Al Jazeera's, Al Jazeera's investigative documentary Gold Mafia? We are living in unbearable poverty as a direct result of the looting of our national resources by those in power who are living in obscene opulence and just as the family and just as the family I highlighted when we try to speak out and stand up against this grave injustice we are treated as detractors and enemies of the state who deserve to be jailed. Therefore as a country, most visitors, how are we supposed to behave? Are we seriously expected to keep quiet? Is that the wise or even African thing to do? Should we not use this opportunity or the presence of our relatives from Southern Africa to let our grievances heard? However, this has to be done in a most peaceful and dignified way so that our guest takes us seriously as respectful people who are merely crying out for help.
if we fail to speak up, we have no one to blame but ourselves when our suffering is never taken seriously and with the gravity it deserves by the international community. This is literally a once in a lifetime opportunity for the suffering, impoverished and oppressed people of Zimbabwe to be heard by the world. We cannot afford to suffer in silence just so just so that Mnangagwa can look good in the eyes of his fellow sad counterparts. The Bristol and Tendai, Ruben Bofana, a social justice advocate and a writer eh, through Nyanda Radio, but as Zimbabwe, it's Nazir, and I say, Nay, two days of Mukfunga, I'm sorry, in the comment section.